Let's look at two genes and uh, when two genes can code for two characteristics. Now, just as Mendel performed experiments looking at one gene, he also did lots of crosses looking at two genes. We call it when you cross one gene monohybrid and two genes dihybrid. Now, he found that genes were inherited independently of each other. One gene did not affect another. This gave rise to Mendel's law of independent assortment, the idea that alleles of one gene uh, sort into gametes independently of the alleles of another gene. We now know about this through studying meiosis. You may remember that homologous pairs can arrange themselves either way around in metaphase one. And this is true for each pair regardless of the others. So just because one chromosome a pair is arranged that way doesn't mean that the others all arranged the same way. They are all randomly assorted, independently assorted. And this is very important, okay? Let's look at this example here. Uh, two genes for seed characteristics will look at their color, but also their texture. So their color can either be yellow or green. Their texture can be round or wrinkled. So yellow is dominant over green, capital Y for yellow, small y for green. And round is dominant over wrinkled. So capital R for round and small r for wrinkled. So can you work out all the possible genotypes for the following four seeds? Okay, so we've got this one here is yellow and it is round. So it could be any of these four uh, genotypes here. All right, uh, it could obviously all be dominant. Big Y, big Y, big R, big R. Uh, it could be heterozygous for both genes uh, or it could be dominant for one and heterozygous for the other or heterozygous for one, dominant for the other. Okay, so there's various combinations there, but one is not affecting the other. This is, has to be homozygous recessive for both genes. Um, notice that we always um, put the Ys first followed by the Rs in this case. We don't mix up the alleles. Uh, we don't do YR, YR, it's always Ys and the Rs. Um, this one, you've got those genotypes and these are the genotypes here for that seed there. So if you take pure breeding parents that express the different traits and cross them, all their offspring will be the same. Look at the fact that the yellow uh, seed here can only um, give out one type of gamete. It can only pass on a capital Y, it can only pass on a capital R. Similarly for the other seed, the wrinkled green, it can only pass on one type of gamete, small y, small r. Therefore, all the offspring are gonna be heterozygous, big Y, little y, big R, little r. But if we interbreed those together and add them into a Punnett square, there's a lot more different gametes that you can have. In fact, there's four different gametes you can have formed now. You could have big Y, big R, little Y, big R, big Y, little R, or little Y, little R. And therefore, when you have four by four Punnett square, when we look at heterozygous individuals crossing um, in this classic dihybrid cross, and actually what you end up with is 16 possible genotype combinations and you get this classic Mendelian ratio of a nine to three to three to one for the phenotypes that you end up with at the end, okay? Um, we would expect to achieve this ratio with a large enough sample size. Okay, let's move on and look at something called autosomal linkage. It's still dihybrid crossing. We're lo still looking at um, two genes coding for two characteristics, okay? But we now know that Mendel's law of independent assortment doesn't apply to all allele combinations, okay? If genes actually are located on the same chromosome, then they may be inherited as a pair. Think about it, think about meiosis, think about the idea of the chromosomes arranging themselves independently, that's fine. But if you've got two chromosomes and on the chromosomes, are the, the, the genes we're interested in on the same chromosome, then that will, one will be on one side, then the other one will still be on that side as well. So when genes are on the same chromosome, what we call autosomal linkage, then they may be inherited together. Let's look at this example of in sweet peas. The genes for flower color are linked with pollen grain shape uh, as they are carried on the same chromosome, okay? So, uh, two sweet pea plants reproduced. They had purple flowers and long pollen. And it was known that, the that 
that they were heterozygous. So the genotypes were big P little p and big L little l. Okay, so they were crossed together. Now when genes are linked, you should draw out the chromosomes to show how they are linked. So here are the chromosomes, okay? So on one chromosome, we've got big P little p, uh, sorry, big P, uh, big L on the left hand uh, chromosome there, and on its homologous pair on the other side, we've got little p, little l. So those are linked on the same chromosome, okay? So the genes were linked as shown in the diagram. So when gametes are formed, bearing in mind that when a gamete is formed, one of each of the chromosomes will go into the gamete from the mother and the, farmer, and the father. When gametes are formed, one of each of that, of each, of the pair, one of the pair will go into the gamete. So if you, if the big P chromosome goes in, for example, then the big L will go with it. Okay, it's part of the same chromosome. So they are linked together. So that chromosome will form a gamete with big P, big L. That chromosome will form a gamete with little p, little L. Okay. So now we actually, there are less gamete options than we uh, saw in the last cross. And actually we end up here with a more, uh, what you'd expect with a monohypercross with a three to one offspring ratio, okay? Um, uh, so we'd normally expect a nine to three to three to one. However, because these genes are linked, uh, it's almost like they are behaving um, like one gene. So that's why it's like a monohybrid cross, really. That's why we're getting this three to one ratio in the end. Okay. Now, here's a question. The same cross was done again with the two heterozygous uh, sweet peas. Um, but this time, there were some purple short and some white long individuals in the offspring. Now, remember, we didn't see any of those before. We only saw purple long and white short. But now we're saying there's some purple short and some white long. How could that possibly happen? Well, this idea that genes are linked is true, but it doesn't happen like that all the time. We're forgetting one other process that occurs in meiosis that can interfere with this, and that is called crossing over, okay? Let's go back and think about this dip, a diploid cell with 23 homologous pairs, and here is our uh, homologous pair here, okay, that we saw before. Now remember the first thing that happens before cell division is that uh, each of those chromosomes will replicate, okay, in DNA replication and, before, and become sister chromatids joined by centromeres, okay. Now, in prophase one, a process uh, called crossing over occurs. All right, you remember this. So uh, bits of homologous chromosome that are the same can swap over. They can break off uh, and rejoin to form new uh, recombinations, okay? So actually in this case now, we've got a chromosome in there which has got big P, uh, little l on it, all right? And we've got one which is uh, which wasn't there before, and we've got little p and big L. So now we do have some different gametes that can form, and actually we can go, theoretically, any of the options could form, and we could have, we could have uh, a Punnett square that looks more like this. The red ones are the ones that have only been formed through crossing over, and the black ones are the ones we had in the before, which are sort of the true parental chromosome um, uh, combinations. Now the phenotype ratio works out on this diagram as nine to three to three to one, but it would never ever actually be that because you're gonna get a lot more of the black offspring as it were here, the, the ones that are written in black um, because those are the true parental um, uh, genotypes and crossing over doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't always happen in the same places. It's, it's sort of random where it happens. So we're gonna get a few of the red colored uh, genotypes occurring, and mostly the black ones. The ratio will really be determined by how close together on a particular chromosome two genes are. Um, if they're really, really close, they're loci, then they're more likely to go together and, um, and um, not be affected by crossing over, okay? But if they're far apart, then they're much more likely to be affected by crossing over. 
So we can actually use this and look at the offspring uh, ratios to actually work out how close together genes uh, loci are on a particular chromosome.